This week on Grounded by the Farm, we are talking about something people really get passionate about, peppers. Randy and his family have Bailey Farms, a business that not only has farms in North Carolina where he started, but has later purchased a farm in Florida. Florida gives him the ability to produce all year long. I've had a chance to go out on his farm several times, but this time I met him in their Oxford, North Carolina office. And it's a little too cold to go out on farms. There were no peppers growing in North Carolina. However, I had a chance to see the rest of their operation. See, the Baileys operate what we call a grower, packer, shipper operation now. As I mentioned, they have farms, so they are growing peppers, but they also pack and ship peppers for not only themselves, but for other farmers in the area. With that, Paul's gonna show us around. Here on the front end, I have just a small clip of him in the warehouse, and you will see the noise is a bit high. So I'm just gonna dub it over now that I'm back in the home studio and able to do it with a little less starting to do a couple different things. We're starting to pick them in bins. Yeah. Um, which makes transportation a little bit easier. And we up the size of the trays that we're using. We used to use the 13th to pick, but now it's much bigger. And it helps us get more product in uh, on truck. So now when they're when they're picking, do they actually carry these in the field or yes. do they use the they'll, other baskets the and buckets. throw this in? They'll take the, they'll pick in buckets and then they'll take it to a truck and yeah. put them in these okay. bins and then start stacking. I kept getting distracted by these beautiful yellow bell peppers as he taught. And then it was the reds and then it was the oranges. Really, I was distracted by everything I saw in this warehouse and I kept making it so that I could see whatever it was. Paul saw my enthusiasm for it, and he captured that and went forward with it. I didn't spend much time at the Poblanos, but Paul was on a mission. He wanted to show me some of the peppers that had been brought in that were the freshest ones in the place. He stopped at the ghost peppers. Not my personal favorite, but I have family that love ghost peppers. Love that Paul was able to tell me that he and his wife have several dishes they love. He makes a great salsa from the ghost pepper, and his wife makes poppers. Like a lot of us make jalapeno poppers, she'll make those with ghost peppers for their parties. He loves them. As I was walking around, I couldn't help but remember how much this has changed since I was a kid. When I was a child, we never sold tomatillos in the grocery store. And now the grocery store in my mom's neighborhood, tomatillos is a mainstay. We never go in there where they don't have some. Paul kept trying to find me the perfect peppers to look at. He found these habaneros, opened them up for me so I could take a look. And while I was doing that, he also found these cherry bombs. I'm not very familiar with them, although I always think how beautiful they are. He says the flavor profile, the heat profile, is similar to jalapeno, but he has a friend that makes a Jamaican salsa with those cherry bombs and says it is an amazing treat for the family and the folks at the office. As we were going through, he noticed the Hungarian wax peppers and we had to stop. It was something different I hadn't seen. These look like just regular banana peppers to me, However, the flavor, it's a much spicier flavor. He says this is what's sold in the Northern Midwest, especially communities with a high Polish background because these are made for some of the more traditional foods in Poland and in Hungary. We also went into where the team was working on Serrano peppers. I have eaten more than my fair share of Serranos probably. But you can see here, they're actually going through and pulling out the ones that are damaged or the ones that have some other issue with them. It's interesting, they actually pull out some of the ones with a little bit of marking and cracking. Those go to the Latino markets because the flavor is typically a little bit different. And some of us don't care so much about the beauty of a pepper as much as the flavor. And so that's what that secondary market really looks for is that cracking that they are familiar with. I'm not that familiar with shishito peppers. However, Paul told me that some of the trendier restaurants now are flash frying these. 
and serving them with a little balsamic vinegar. And now I can't wait to find that on the menu somewhere because I've got to tell you, it sounds awesome. These are some of my favorite peppers. I had a chance to get to know these really well. And quite frankly, it's how I met the Bailey several years ago. These are called Bellafinas. They're a bell pepper, but they're very sweet flavored. They're perfect for snacking. I have actually picked these up and taken a bite out of them like it's an apple, which kind of surprises some people. However, once you've tried it, you may not look back. These are tiny bell peppers. You can see the shape and size. Great for hummus as well. And you can tell here, it was a manual packing line where people actually put the peppers in, they Ziploc it, and then put it in a box for shipping. In some of the other areas though, they have automated packing lines. And you can see this one works pretty darn well. Although occasionally you can tell some peppers fell through and they're sitting down there at the bottom. This one is a large bag of sweet peppers. But you can also see that they have some smaller bags in different places. And the small bag of habaneros is still more than my heart is going to take into my house. <laughs> but these habaneros, I can remember taking them years ago as a speaking aid for one of my deals. And having a person in a hotel get so excited when they saw me with bags of peppers in my hand that I had to explain I had been to a farm earlier in the day and picked them up there. And they were asking me so many questions, I ended up having to let them take the peppers away from me. The final area Paul showed me around was the shipping area. And this was a little bit different because it was showing me some of the various things that had come together during our tour. So you still have some of the peppers that are gonna be shipped in bulk, just in an open box where you you go in the grocery store and you'll either be able to pick directly out of this box or out of a bin. And then there's some that are packaged. He made sure that I got a look at these Cubanelle peppers. He says they're really shipped in high numbers to places like Miami because the Cubanelle is so popular there. Also really important for the Puerto Rican markets. So not only going to Puerto Rico, but areas like New York where you have a lot of Puerto Ricans living. They make their favorite national dish, I think, sofritos. And um, I love that the Baileys include some of that information right on the packaging, not only recipe tips and nutrition information, but you can always find that Bailey Farm seal on the bag. So in this room, they have pallets upon pallets of individual types of peppers, but then what they were doing is creating individual palettes for each store, for each one of their customers as they order, whether they're bulk orders or packaged orders, they pull together exactly what's on that order sheet. So not very many people are gonna want a full palette of one type of pepper, but a lot of them want a large number of jalapenos and some things and then maybe a few uh, habaneros or others. I'm your host, Janice Person, and I hope you enjoyed the video, but I know you're gonna love listening to the interview with Randy Bailey. That's gonna be in Grounded by the Farm in all your favorite podcast apps, Wednesday, February 5th. You can also find that podcast, other information, we have blog posts, the video posts like this one, all on our website, groundedbythefarm.com. Thanks so much.